Hi everyone, let's continue designing our simply supported bead has beta euro code 2. Now in this part 3, we'll be designing the shear links, also called the stirrups. Now just before going through that process, this is the very summary of what we had in the flexure design, in the bending design. So basically we said that uh, we are required to put the compression enforcement, we check the K and um, we are providing 3H12 as for the compression reinforcement and for the bottom reinforcement that is for the tension reinforcement we are providing 7H20. So if you take any cross section along this beam this is what you're going to view. Now we did something else we checked the deflection using the effective span to the effective depth ratio and it was satisfactory. Now it's the time to move on and design the shear links. <coughs> Now, designing the shear links as per the year code 2. Now, uh, a very brief introduction. As we all know that the concrete itself has a fair capacity when it comes to resisting shear stresses, but that is just up to certain limits. Beyond that limits, we must provide the shear links. This is the case when you are designing uh, the slabs. You really don't provide the shear links, but when it comes to beams, we must provide at least the minimum amount of shear links. Right, the method used by the Eurocode 2 is called the variable starting collination method. It is a bit more complicated when compared with the method used by the BS8110. So for the, for the users of BS8110, you'll find it a bit more complicated. But this method really tends to use less shear links and thus more saving of money. Right, basically, when I am um, putting a force into my beam so this is the four bending test usually what happens if i'm not providing the shear links okay this is my cross section i'm not putting any shear links something very can happen really quickly and out of sudden this is called the shear cracks it happens near to the support at the face of the support due to the shear stresses as you can see here if you draw the shear force diagram it is at its maximum near to the support but at the mid span, we have the maximum bending moment. Now, the thing is, if you just refer to the YouTube, there are many videos on YouTube um, illustrating the kind of failure that might occur if, in a case, you, if you are not providing the shear links. There are plenty of them. You just go, go ahead and watch them. So basically, in order to tackle such kind of uh, problems, you need just to provide the shear reinforcement. Now, it, it can come in a form of vertical shear links as the one you can see here and I can also do something else I can bend up the main rebar so the main rebar at the bottom I can just bend them at an angle of 45 degrees and that is one solution as well I can use both of them as well so uh, in, in addition to the vertical shear links I also can use the inclined shear links anyways what you can tell here is that near to the support, near to the end, as you can tell here, the shear links are closely spaced, but near to the, when I'm approaching the mid span, they are farther apart. And the only reason here to explain this, whether you have a UDL or a point load, is because near to the support, I'm having the maximum shear stress, but theoretically, at the mid span, I don't have any shear stress. That's why we just keep the minimum amount of shear links in the mid span, but the maximum amount near to the support. All right, basically, what do we need in order to design the shear links? We need basically four equations plus this theta. There's the VRDC. This is the capacity of my member to resist the shear forces, but that is without any shear enforcement. Okay, this is just the member. With a, of course, with a, with a uh, tension rebar, but we don't use any shear reinforcement. Now, this is this should be compared with the VED. The VED is the one I calculate from the shear force diagram, and I must compare it. If this one is greater than this one, then I don't have to provide any shear links because the member has the enough capacity to resist the shear stresses. But that is not the case when we are designing the beams. There is also the VRD max, 
and we need this one actually to uh, well this this represents the concrete start okay and this can vary with an angle of 22 degrees up to 45 degrees it can go beyond 45 degrees but in that case I'll have to redesign my member anyways we are talking about angles between this range so there's the VRDS this is my final destination I need this one here because I'll be requiring to um, this is what basically I need ASW over S this is the area of shear reinforcement over the spacing so if I'm able to obtain this one that means I'll be able to design the shear links as the ones you can see here so um, what is inside this box is just constants basically the VRDC here is a constant because it's 0.18 divided by the gamma C which is the partial factor of safety of concrete 1.5 um, so basically what I'm dealing with is constants if you find this slide a bit confusing then just forget about it uh, focus on the following here are the steps that you can follow in order to design the shear links first of all you're going to obtain the VED this is from the shear force diagram and then you can go ahead and obtain the VRDC okay the concrete capacity to resist the shear forces without any shear links usually what happens this is the case when we are designing the slabs but since we are talking about beams most of the cases the VRD the capacity of the concrete will be less than the VED from the shear force diagram and that I must provide the shear links now I'm going to assume the angle if the angle is 22 degrees this my this must be verified so the VRD max the one I showed you must be greater than the VED if this is true then the, the, the angle is 22 degrees and the assumption is valid and the final step that just substitute here I equate the VRDS with a VED in order to find the ASW over S if the angle though is not 22 degrees it, it, if it's greater than 22 degrees then I'm gonna need to calculate the angle why do I need the angle because the final answer here or the final equation that I'm, uh, I'm aiming to find or work out has this theta all right let's get into our example things will get clarified now this is our simply supported beam under a UDL so I don't really need the effective span I just take the clear span now in this case I'm gonna take 300 this is the width of my wall I'm gonna assume it to be 300 and that I'm gonna get the clear span to be 7 5.7 meter now if I'm drawing the shear force diagram it looks something like this because I'm having a UDL and remember at a distance of D at a distance of D I am finding or working on the VED it's not the maximum here at the face of the support it's not at the center of the support it is at, at a distance of D so the code allows me to take the VED at a distance of D this will be my designing shear force all right now I'm gonna need to put the shear links and this will be like this now uh, I'm gonna put it in I'm gonna put it from uh, at the face of the support since I'm having a simpler support beam so the shear links start at the face of the support up to a distance of X now what is the distance X it is when I'm having the maximum shear links beyond that point comes the VRD minimum so beyond this point what I mean is that I just need to provide the minimum reinforcement again I'm not having the maximum shear force at this point so I'm having a shear a zero shear force at this point so there is absolutely no need to waste material so this is the equation that I'm gonna need in order to find the um, ASW over S for the minimum shear lengths right so this is the free body diagram of our example and we have an ultimate total of 70.5 kN per meter 
this is my shear force diagram under a UDL and if I'm going to calculate the maximum shear force it's going to be WL over 2 this is in the case of a simple supported beam what I get is 211.5 kN remember this is at the center of the support but I don't need it at the center of the support my VED is going to be at a distance of what? again at a distance of D now before moving to the distance of D there's one thing uh, I am required to calculate it's called the shear force at the face of the support here at this point so I already have calculated this one here now I'm calculating the one at the face of the support I will need it later on now in order to do so the VED the VEF at the face of the support is equal to V max which is the one I have already obtained minus W which is the load here times the support with 300 divided by 2 so this is what I get this is the shear force at the face of the support at this point now yet this is not the one I am aiming, <coughs> I am aiming for the one I am aiming for is a distance of D so again what I do is just the same procedure so I want to find out the VED the VED is just as the same as the one we found it with the VEF so the VEF which is this one here we subtract it we subtract it with the W times D because I'm going through the distance of D that is my M that is the VED and the value is the ultimate load so this is what I get 170 kilonewton all right now I have obtained the VED I'll be comparing this with the VRDC the concrete capacity again what I'm dealing with is constants I'm having the partial factor of safety 1.5 so my CRDC is going to be 0.12 I have the K here okay I have the D and it is 1.67 Sigma CP again it's a zero because I don't have any axial force now the row here is related to the tension reinforcement so my area of tension reinforcement is 2200 millimeters square and this is the D times B if I work it out it comes out to be 0.016 this should be less than 0.2 which is in this case okay but remember I don't really provide the entire tension reinforcement to the end support the thing is here if you remember the bending moment diagram I'm providing the maximum area of reinforcement to resist the maximum bending moment but at the support I don't really have the maximum bending moment so instead of putting the entire 100% of the main rebar I'm just going to assume only 50% of the, of the tension rebar extending to both ends so basically what I mean is that instead of taking 0 0.016 I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.5 and this is what I get all right all right now I can work out the VRDC this is what you're going to get once you work it out again there is nothing absolutely difficult about this and just remember the VRDC should be compared with the minimum which is this one here and it turns out to be uh, again the minimum is less than the, the VRDC the one I calculated which is okay now <clears throat> the main thing here if I'm comparing my VED I have obtained it from the shear force diagram with a VRDC what I can see here is that I must provide the shear links because this one is less than this one so my member will not take the shear stresses therefore I must provide the shear links all right so we have calculated the VED we have calculated the VRDC and we checked the VRDC it, it is less than the VED from the shear force diagram and thus I must provide the shear links now I'm gonna pause it here um, next part I'm going to continue designing my shear links.